next generation website. Somebody mind? Has some objection? Well, ideally, we'd want you to be sharing your schemas to uh, GitHub and. <laughs> okay, that's very nice. Okay, so. Yeah, the floor is yours. Yes, hi, I'm Rudnyasa, and I'm a PhD student uh, under Mercy, sir. And uh, my topic is CantoVim automation. And for this, I'll be using a deep learning approach. Um, yeah, thank you for our sponsors today. Um, so, what is a uh, CantoVim? Uh, everyone knows uh, here. Look. We usually use a laser scanner or a LiDAR scanner to scan a room, and we collect a point cloud data with XYZ and RGB features. So this is like millions of point cloud data, and everyone knows what's BIM here, I guess. So it is like a 3D replica of a building, digital twin of a building. So to convert this LiDAR scan point cloud data into a building information model, um, and this process is usually called a scan to build. And for this, uh, to, uh, basically, our research is to automate this process. And for this, we'll be using deep learning. Uh, one of the reasons that why we are doing this is uh, looking at the current scenario. Uh, scan to build process is time consuming uh, uh, as it is entirely manual in right, right now. So it is time consuming uh, that we don't have any specific timeline, how much time will it take to construct a 3D model. So usually there are delays in project timelines. Another thing is we need uh, labor. Uh, uh, and we just don't need labor, we need skilled labor, which is always costly. So most of the time, uh, what here Australia does is like it spends millions of dollars and outsources this project for uh, to cheap labor countries. And well, this is affecting the jobs in Australia as well. Uh, once after outsourcing, there are always some inconsistencies and errors because you don't know what kind of model uh, the firm is using. And there are always inconsistencies between different uh, methods followed by the different companies. And another uh, one of the reasons is communication barriers. You're not able to communicate your needs properly, language barriers or data barriers, anything. Well, this process is also uh, resource in intensive, as in you require a lot of licenses, heavy computation power. And uh, so, well, uh, it is quite, it becomes quite costly. Uh, another is data management issues because most of the companies don't want um, the data to be uh, given to other countries. Most of the data is confidential. So this is this is one of few of the bottlenecks that uh, that that we identified. That that is why we are doing this project. That is scan to web automation. Uh, so our basic research aim is to develop an automated process for converting three D scan data into a building information model to enhance the accuracy and efficiency in the construction industry, make it make it more faster, efficient uh, by uh, just letting the machine do the work. And that's it. Uh, so these are the basic steps of scan to BIM automation. The first is uh, pre-processing the data. So usually when you scan a data, it is a raw point cloud data, which is millions of points. You don't need those many points, so you can down sample it or downscale it to a lower scale. As long as the information is intact, uh, you, you can use it for uh, the other processing steps. So this is one of the pre-processing steps. Other thing is uh, removing the outliers, like cleaning the data set basically. And uh, if you want any specific requirements, like only a room or only floors of a scanned building, so that you can do using the pre-processing step in the pre-processing step. Next comes uh, the semantic segmentation. So once the data is pre-processed, it, it gets um, semantically segmented. Basically, it is uh, assigning labels to each and every point cloud point in the point cloud data. Uh, these are predefined labels. Classes uh, such as walls, doors, windows, uh, 
these classes are predefined and then you in you put in a labeled data set in the model here uh, the model is that we are trying to find uh, or develop is a deep learning model uh, and mostly in such models where semantic segmentation takes place uh, encoder decoder network is used and most popular is unit right now units are used uh, in 2D data as well as 3D data nowadays for semantic segmentation. So once you have got labeled data from of the point cloud data, from the point cloud data, we now <coughs> extract measurements. This is one of the most important step, step for BIM because you need the exact measurements. Uh, here, once you get the scan data uh, for extracting measurements, we are using a process called as bounding box uh, method wherein every object, individual object is found, found out in the point cloud data and around it, a bounding box is, uh, bounding box is put around the object and uh, so that we can get the height, width and length of that particular object. Uh, if few of the bounding boxes are not meeting a certain criteria, we can just discard them uh, because these are the errors that, are, that will further be caused during the 3D reconstruction process. So uh, this is the major thing wherein we extract the measurements. And once the bounding boxes are, uh, are availed, uh, we can convert it into a, uh, basically convert it into an Excel sheet or a, a table wherein you get all the measurements. Plus now that you have also got semantics along with it, now comes the 3D reconstruction process wherein we give the measurements like this is a wall with this, this dimension at this location, and then you construct a wall using IFC operation. Uh, this is the basic process of scan to bin steps that we are going to follow. Uh, uh, after the 3D reconstruction process, of course, uh, there comes a very important step that is accuracy assessment. How do we uh, find out whether our model is uh, good or not? So accuracy assessment takes place at two steps. First is the semantic segmentation step, and the next is 3D reconstruction step. So uh, in semantic segmentation step, uh, there are three metrics that we use. That is overall accuracy, that is O accuracy. MIAU is mean uh, intersection over union, and M accuracy is kind of mean accuracy. Uh, so uh, first of all, let me clear these things. That is uh, true positive, true negatives. False positive, false negative. So these are like TPT and FPF, FM. Uh, so basically consider it like positive and negative is something that the model tells you whether the object is there or not. And true and false is something that is what the actual data signifies. So when the model says it's uh, true positive, that means that um, uh, so when the model says it's positive and also it is true in actual world, it is called as true positive. So overall accuracy is something that uh, determines how correctly your model identified all the classes, uh, how correct the prediction is with respect to all the point cloud data. So that is basically overall accuracy. Then comes, it is mean accuracy, which is class-wise accuracy. So here we do it class-wise and then we take the mean. K is the number of classes over here. And mean IAU is basically the overlap between uh, your correctly predicted area over the total area that was actually and a union of the union of the actual area and the predicted area. So it actually signifies how much is the overlap of correctly predicted semantic segmentation. The same step steps are done in 3D reconstruction, where precision is uh, the intersection between the predicted model and the reference model, the area actually, uh, with reference with reference to predicted model. Uh, R is recall, which is again the same, uh, which is uh, uh, the intersection between the predicted model and reference model, but with respect to reference model. And F score is something that one one metric that we use for that is a harmonic mean for precision and recall, because as precision and recall is a trade off between it, it is a kind of a trade off. So we need one metric to justify how well the model did. So we usually use F score. This is the accuracy assessment step that we usually conduct. So here we have got some preliminary results at first. Uh, the top is the uh, the top image is the ground truth and the bottom image is the actual predicted image. So I wanted to show you the errors over here as well. Uh, so in the preliminary results, we used uh, 
input features such as XYZ and RGB uh, features of the point cloud. Uh, the output was 13 classes around, and the data set we used here was uh, Stanford 3D data set that is available online. Um, this is just a testing. So here we used the model point net. And you can see uh, in the in the bottom most part predicted area, we can see that a uh, few of the that there is a green patch in the right bottom that is uh, supposed to be a wall which is detected as a door because the light green is the door. So yes, uh, so you can see the errors that are right now uh, in the deep learning algorithms. So we have to the other things that get confused uh, that the machine gets confused in classifying. Uh, these are the basic problem areas that we identified. That is walls. Walls get confused between uh, the first thing is the wall that gets confused between uh, mostly windows, doors, and um, beam and columns. I I there is a confusion between beam and columns, but we don't have enough data to train a model over there. So we are going to focus mostly on walls, windows, and doors over here. Um, ceilings and floors have no issue in identifying that much because uh, it is always like uh, the highest X and the lowest X, uh, lowest uh, height. So it is easy, easier to identify these. The main error is usually in walls, windows, and doors. Uh, here we can see that, uh, one second, sorry. So the window windows are mostly like almost 10% data is identified as walls. And here the same thing is happening for doors. Almost like 10% data is again identified as walls. So this confusion is something that is seen in most of the deep learning models. So we we found this for our media. Uh, these are a few more preliminary results. We used different, we tried different algorithms like point net and DGCNN. So point and plus plus is just uh, an algorithm that was developed after PointNet, which focused on local local areas more. And DGCNN is like a graph-based model, uh, just like uh, just like he explained before. Uh, graphs are used nowadays to find connections, so DGCNN is one of them. Uh, mm, so these were the identified research problems that we found out. That first was the heavy reliance on labeled data. Without label data, or uh, uh, we cannot train a deep learning model. So different new models that are now coming up, like self-supervised transformer-based networks and generative models, uh, these are trying to identify the patterns of point cloud data. Just like he, uh, I I didn't uh, get his name, but uh, during LLMs, he did explain the situation called as uh, local embeddings or finding the positional encoding of in the data set. This can be used in point cloud data because our focus is more on location. Another thing that we uh, found out that material classification is missing in the research work, so which is actually necessary for a comprehensive bin. So if possible, we can target that as well. Another is uh, opening detection algorithms like doors, windows. Uh, they still lack capability and are error prone. We there are still uh, there is still confusion between identifying these elements. And we need uh, robust algorithms to identify this. So these are our post potential research ob objectives. The first is to develop a method to reduce the reliance on label data. So semi-supervised or unsupervised learning algorithms can be used now, explored more. So uh, next is uh, identification of walls, uh, complex geometries, uh, and opening detection algorithm. So walls, stores, window, yeah, we are trying to focus more on that. Next is uh, incorporate material classification. This is uh, one of the objectives that can be, can be um, uh, focused on for potential research, as potential research. So uh, that's it. Uh, thank you. This is. Perhaps I need to clarify that uh, to be honest, in the second term of each her study, so she's early in her research. Thank you. <laughs> and I saw that you're looking in the uh, uh, point that I'm planning to have look into other networks. Or... Uh, yes, uh, 
point net is was like uh, the basic that actually uh, you know started more exploration in the deep learning graph. The point net is usually used as a base network for most of the networks nowadays. I mean, the idea of point net is yeah, used because they have already point net plus. Yes, yes, um, <laughs> yes. Uh, so point net plus plus. Uh, so the idea of point net was to not use uh, voxelization method for classification of deep learning algorithms. So they did develop a method of directly using raw raw point cloud data for semantic segmentation. Mm -hmm. So every algorithm later has captured this idea and try to implement more on this. So yes, nowadays it is quite popular. One of the things that he said, local uh, transformer networks that are very popular nowadays. So that can be a potential way for 3D. I guess. Yeah, now it's very interesting because we had something here at the beginning about linking data and trying to find the data and understand the data. Now, with your presentation, we have the completely different end of the whole chain of uh, information management, where you try to create features and try to create the structure and uh, the data, the information that after that is going to be used to separate. And I'm, I have a quick question. So we are talking about vocabulary. But now when you are doing this, and you're working with the clusters. Do you pay attention about vocabularies and relationships between the different um, features in the segmentation? And after that, what you supposed to build a model? Oh, what, what do you mean by exactly vocabularies? Um, How the things are named? What is the wall or is something no. else? No. It's, it depends on the label data, actually. Yeah, the labels, you can define the labels by itself. Yes, we can do that. But yeah. if you're, if, I mean, if wall is set a different name, we can just change the data set into one label. Yeah. Yes. Oh. I guess the big question, perhaps the question is how the relation between different objects in, in say, in a building is, is constructed. I think that's sort of another thing. So. You always have wall. Sorry, you always have windows if you have walls. So you won't have windows without having walls. So that that type of semantics and relationships yeah, can be helpful perhaps in, in yeah. research. Sure, sure. But also the, the using the semantics and if you're already available, it also can be useful after that for uh, interoperability of data. Yes. Yeah, you have a quick question. Yeah, um, it's a very interesting topic, but also, I think it's also a very classic computer science research topic as well. So if you look at the publications in CVPR over the last couple of years, I think there's a lot of work in this space. So it would be, yes. yeah, I, I think my, my question is more related to the data preparation. So as you mentioned, you are relying on pre-trained uh, models and also use data for training. So in your research, especially with the preliminary work, you're using the S3 DIS, the data set from Stanford. Stanford, yeah. It's been released recently with about 271 rooms. What's your strategy for training and testing? And also, is that enough? The data is not enough. To have a comprehensive BIM model, it's not enough. But for testing purposes, it's good. But I think we have more data. Yeah, that, I think that's my question. What's your plan or strategy to prepare more data for your research? Because if you are planning to collect the data by yourself, you probably will never meet this, you know, the requirement. It's not only about the amount of the data, but also about the high quality labeled data, who is going to do the labeling for you. So I, I, anyway, that, that's the... Yeah, that's always one of the main challenges. If you try to link the work in computer science into some real application immediately, it's probably, you're going to worry about the algorithms because it's been rapidly evolving for those uh, new algorithms. But how are you going to deal with the data? That's probably my, my, my question here. That was the first question that I asked my supervisor as well. And I guess assured that okay. we have data. Uh, another quick one. How can you tell the material from the point cloud? 
that, type that of material. Is one of the questions that uh, previously also I faced. Uh, this is this is a very very difficult to identify because one is texture, but second is color. But color cannot. I mean, if you just paint over the wall, it cannot be identified properly. That's that's true. Right? Um, but um, it is a difficult difficult thing to deal with. Yeah. But I, mean, I, I am still at the literature review. I've read few papers on it, but they they show good results. I I I'm not sure how maybe potentially might be looking at cooperating point clouds with other type of sensors. Could yeah, be the, the, the uh, high resolution images or thermal cameras imageries. Uh, I mean I asked it as thing. well, yes, yes. I, I also looked at that as well. Yeah. Different like NIR or some some yeah. Yeah, so this is early uh, in in Chit Nyasa's project, and we haven't we haven't basically finalized the objectives. So it can be. Yeah. yeah, very nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, and now we are moving to the next presenter, and this is going to be Yuga. Yuga. Can you share again? Yeah, perfect. Very good. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Yu Gao, and it's my honor to join you as a new candidate this term. And recently, I'm preparing for my research proposal. 